Hello world and welcome to another episode of UBAR. Let's talk about how DNS work and more specifically Route 53. Let's start by giving a brief introduction of what is DNS. Domain name system. Basically the phone book of the internet. It translates the human readable URLs like the domain names like foobar.com or avc.com or aws.amazon.com into the IP addresses of those resources. And Route 53 is the AWS DNS service that help you to, uh, as a developer, to route your users to your applications. Route 53 has 100% of availability. That's uh, pretty incredible, but it's a distributed service that is all around the world and helps you to route uh, your end users to your applications. It routes not only AWS resources, also non-AWS resources, so you can create that. But if you work with AWS resources, you can point it to load balancers, EC2 instances, API gateways, S3, CloudFormation, whatever you machine, you can route your end users into those resources. And the cool thing of working with Route 53 is that it helps you with your multi-region applications because it has many routing policies that will help you with the failover cases, with the latency cases, or with the uh, geolocation cases. So we are going to talk more about that in this video. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave you the playlist of building multi-region applications uh, in the description box. So now let's go a little bit into DNS, how it works. What happens when a user types an address in the browser, like www.avc.com, for example? Because there's many URLs in the world. Developers create them all the time. There is many IP addresses in the world. So how all this gets sorted out? And that's the power of DNS, because everything happens very fast. One disclaimer before going into showing you the flow is that there are caches everywhere here. And that's one of the reasons that we always say that DNS is the problem because, well, uh, everything is cached. So if you change something in the downstream, it takes a while to get a uh, push up uh, all the way up. So sometimes things get cached and they're very hard to invalidate. So with that said, let's go and see how this works. The first step, the user types www.avc in the browser. So know what the browser does? Well, the browser will send this request to the DNS resolver, or sometimes it's called the recursive resolver. This sits in, uh, this is, gets, your browser knows it's because your ISP, so your internet service provider. So whatever is your ISP will have that configured and your browser will know where to go. It goes there. Then the DNS resolver will contact the root namespace. And this root uh, namespace, this root server, there's only 13 in the world. Sure, it's replicated all around the world, but basically uh, it will, based on the end of the URL, basically .com in our case, but it can be .org, it can be .fi or .whatever, it will send the recursive uh, resolver to the right TLD server. And this TLD, our server will know the domain based on avc.com because we are inside the TLD server. It will know what is the authoritative name server. And this is usually the last step in our shortener to get the IP address. So basically in here, it will contain a list of uh, basically domains and records, and it will know what to return back depending on www avc.com it will know based on that this is the IP address route 53 is an authoritative uh, resolver so basically uh, you when you create a domain you will have to create a hosted zone and there you will have these tables where all the um, kind of records are put so we will see that in a second when we get that IP address then that it's returned to the browser and the browser will basically use it to invoke the resource that you want to call. In this example, an API gateway endpoint. So 
what are hosted zones. Basically, hosted zones is something you create in Route 53 inside a domain, and then you will put a list of records. Uh, www represents an I record and it pointing to this IP address. Uh, display will point to this IP address. I don't know. App will point to this IP address. Dev will point to this IP address and so on. So you can build whatever is like um, that level in your URL. So you have many levels. You have the www.abc is the domain and then .com is that final level that it will define in where to start looking for. So basically, when you work with URLs, you always start from the back to the front. So let's see the hosted zones a little bit in action. So now we will look at it from the perspective of Route 53, our authoritative server. So basically, you have, um, again, the user wants to connect to www.abc.com. So here it will connect to that um, authoritative namespace, Route 53, that will log into the uh, hosted zone that you have defined for that domain. And there it will find a table that says when there is nothing, basically, uh, there is no www, then go to this dot 10 IP address. But when there is the www dot, go to this dot 12 IP address. And there you can see that there is record type A. So there's different types of records. We have records type A. That means that it matches an URL, basically www.abc.com to an IP address. 7.1.2 port 10. Then we have the AAAA record that it matches an URL to an IPv6 one. Then we have a C name, and this means that it matches a URL to an URL. So if you get back from an authoritative uh, namespace an URL, you need to start doing the process again. The recursive server will need to start again and try to get that final IP address. And then finally, we have an alias, and that matches a domain with an AWS resource. So that's specifically for AWS. So those are the most typical records you will find when you're working with Route 63. So let's continue. So now the hosted zone will return you that IP address, and you can then do an HTTP get on that IP address. Well, you don't do it. Your browser will do and get the resource that you want. So now that you understand a little bit more about DNS and what is Route 53, let's look at some of the most important characteristics. There is many things that Route 53 does, but I want to focus on three things. The first one is domain registration and hosted zones. I show it to you already. Basically, you can create a domain. And even if you don't create it, you can bring domains from another domain provider and create hosted zones for those domains and build these uh, tables. Then we have the routing capability that I will show you in a second, and we will do a demo uh, in a future video. Basically, it allows you to have different ways of routing your users depending on many factors. Then we have health checks, and that allows you to monitor and understand what is the health situation of some of your resources. And we will see that in a later video. I will be building a health check, and we can get into the details of it. So. Let's look at the most typical routing policies that Route 53 offers. Here, these routing policies are great to build your multi-region uh, applications and also to build more reliable applications, more available applications, and that they perform better. The basic routing policy is the simple one. Basically, a DNS responds to an IP address. Simple thing. No routing whatsoever. It's just the DNS wants to get this URL and boom, we'll return the IP address that we have match. Second one, geo proximity. This means that it will route the user to the closest region within a geographic area. So you can specify that and it will write the user to the right place. Weighted. This is really cool if you want to use uh, AV testing or if you're launching a new feature, it will use relative weights assigned to the resources and route the users to there depending on how much traffic there is already 
So you can say 80% of the traffic to this resource, 20% to this resource, and uh, Route 53 will do it for you. Then we have failover, and this we'll see a demo in a future video that basically if the previous, uh, the main record is down, then it will route it to a secondary region, a secondary resource, and this is done based on health checks. Then we have latency, and this is the demo of the next video, so stay tuned. Uh, here we have the resource that is selected for the customer is the one that is closest, and that is done automatically. That's really cool. And finally, we have geolocation, and this means that it's used a geographic location to route to the closest region based on where they are. This is really good for those multi-region scenarios where you are binded by data and legal requirements. And that's the video for today. If you like it, give a thumbs up. It's a short video explaining Route 53. This is part of a video series where we are architecting multi-region serverless application, event-driven applications, and you can find all the videos related to this in the playlist. If you want to see a full demo on how to use Route 53, check this video that is coming up in the next week, but uh, if you're watching this later on, it will be available. And I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!